are we doing today, York? <laughs> All right, adequate, C plus, B minus, very hot out. All right, uh, this is weird. Uh, I met a woman recently and told her that I have Asperger's syndrome. She said, that's ridiculous, you're doing great. <laughs> I don't think the terms are mutually exclusive. <laughs> now, like they said, uh, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome at the age of five. And while it can be challenging at times, I wouldn't change the way I am, because then I'd be someone else. If anything, I'd kind of like to change you, so that you could have a better understanding. <laughs> now, uh, well, I was, uh, autism is often associated with varying degrees of difficulties, with social skills, communication, and behaviors. But really, yeah. But really, one of the greatest challenges someone on the spectrum will ever experience is being misunderstood. For instance, people often ask me, what's the biggest difference between Asperger's and autism? And I think I'd have to say the biggest thing would be the spelling. <laughs> now, one of the best life lessons my parents taught me was to overcome adversity through humor. Because your life isn't defined by the things that have happened to you so much as your opinion about those things. I think that's why people identify so much with self-deprecating humor, you know? Taking comedy that was directed at you, then subverting it into positive, optimistic humor and using it to make people laugh with rather than at you is not only an effective coping strategy, but can also teach people how to look at life from a different point of view. We should not underestimate its influence or its importance. As a matter of fact, four out of five doctors say that comedy is an absolute good. The fifth doctor was going through some stuff. <laughs> now, when I tell people I do stand-up about being on the spectrum, the first thing I usually hear is, wow, how can you make light of such a serious topic? <laughs> well, my whole point is that life on the spectrum doesn't need to be one giant PSA of an empty swing blowing in the wind set to Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> like, you can't force acceptance, but you can teach it. And if humor makes the learning process more enjoyable, then I like to think everyone benefits. Now, people, I don't see myself <laughs> as a puzzle to be solved, but rather an enigma cloaked in mystery and wrapped in bacon. <laughs> really, I see Asperger's as more of a social difference than a disorder, but if I had to use one word to describe it, that would be uh, awkward. <laughs> that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the default baseline feeling of Asperger's syndrome. Now, throughout elementary school, <laughs> Throughout elementary school. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Literally eight years of that. <laughs> like, so being a socially awkward misfit is difficult enough. And then in kindergarten, they give you a diagnosis, and you're like, hey guys, it's cool. Turns out I have Asperger's. Why are you all laughing at me? <laughs> they were 12, mind you. 12 year olds in kindergarten, that's weird. Anyways, timeline's all screwed up in my head. What was I talking about? <laughs> Right, so I'm gonna shatter the illusion here, folks. I'm referring to notes. Uh, the key to using this effectively is subtlety. <laughs> right, right, right. So uh, I was gonna tell you about my first foray into comedy. Uh, my foray into comedy was when I was screaming yo mama jokes at the school bully. <laughs> it's a true story. And uh, I will be the first to admit that a playground is not the most traditional of performance venues, but the crowd was decent and I got a few laughs, so I stayed with it. Out of it, it's great. I even got my own joke superhero out of it. Guy's name was Socially Awkward Man. Clad in a Speedo and a balaclava. <laughs> Nothing bothers Socially Awkward Man with the incomparable ability to withstand changing the subject. Oblivious to personal space. More tenacious than a telemarketer. Able to create embarrassing pauses with a single proclamation. Hey, I can see Uranus from here. Uh, socially awkward man doesn't date very much. <laughs> but it's interesting, uh, upon reflection, uh, I got into comedy uh, because I wanted to fight back. But now it's become my main way of connecting to people. So in the, uh, when people ask me a question like, say, uh, what's it like to have autism? The first thing I usually think is, I don't know, what's it like to be you? I, it, and it's pretty much impossible to answer a question like that, because you can't filter out your more neurologically typical way of thinking than I can filter out my Aspergian way of thinking. <laughs> so what I try to do is show people how I feel through jokes and images. And hopefully, this will resonate with them on some level. Now, in the media, we are often uh, portrayed as eccentric geniuses on the guys like the Big Bang Theory, or savants like Rain Man. But in reality, this leads me to wonder why everybody's favorite character in film and television seems to be the one that acts like an Aspie, and yet, Aspies aren't people's favorites in real life. Bazinga. <laughs> yeah, I hate it too. 
Now, the term empathy is misleading. <laughs> because... <laughs> See, right? As an Aspie, I can vouch on behalf of the entire Aspie race, we do feel and appreciate emotions. We just don't express it in a conventional way. <laughs> now, uh, another large part of having Asperger's is, you know, obsessions and interests. Uh, except here's the interesting part. What separates an Aspie's obsessions <laughs> from a neurotypical's obsessions <laughs> is that it's a little more laser targeted, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that. So in uh, moral terms, honesty is without a doubt a virtue. But in social terms, <laughs> wait for it. In social terms, it can lead to trouble, usually by offending someone who didn't have to hear the whole truth. I think we can all relate to that. Me, I, uh, my ex-girlfriend, you'll know why in a second. <laughs> she asked me, do you think I'm pretty? And I said, oh, of course. Then she said, do you think I'm as pretty as Jennifer Lawrence? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another misconception about being on the spectrum is uh, that we don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, taking things literally is the default mode for a lot of Aspies, which is why so many of us don't pick up on subtleties and sarcasm or irony. But a lot of us have a great sense of humor. It's just so deadpan that it doesn't always register. I mean, uh, my ex-girlfriend, the same one, uh, <laughs> She asked me to buy her a slinky dress, so I got her this. It doesn't fit very well, but you should see her go downstairs. <laughs> All right. Now, most people wouldn't think twice about where to stand when you're talking to someone. It's a form of nonverbal communication, something we learn automatically during childhood. But for an Aspie, <laughs> <laughs> this might not be automatic, <laughs> but it's ironic because uh, many people on the spectrum hate being touched or are unusually intolerant of having others enter their personal space, which gets me to my final point, ladies and gentlemen. We need to see the world expand its idea of acceptable behavior to include people on the spectrum. And I firmly believe that comedy, in whatever form it may take, can help pave the way for that. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming out today. That was wonderful. <laughs> guys, thank you.